I began piano lessons. And don't worry, my parents didn't force me into it. I didn't go kicking and screaming every week. But I was an objectively bad student. I was loud, I played with my teacher's necklaces, and I didn't practice. And one day, my lack of enthusiasm for lessons came to a peak. I was turning the page to a new piece, and my finger caught on one of the bookbinding staples. It was a small cut, easily repairable with a little bit of pressure and a band-aid. But I sensed an opportunity, so I pulled out all the drama, all the stops, I may have even cried a little bit, and I got to go home from the lesson early. My mom looked at the cut on my finger, and she sat me down at the dining table, and she asked me, Kira, do you want to keep playing piano? And I said, yes, no brainer. And she said, why? And I said, I don't know. Now you, me, and everyone else are surrounded by music. I bet money that most of y'all start your day with the music, and it's probably the infuriating default Apple ringtone. It's a part of our lives from the moment we wake up to the moment we fall asleep. We listen to music on the way to school, to work, to practice. We hide our AirPods during class. Music plays in every cafe and throughout every movie. It's an undetachable part of our lives. And this isn't a digital age phenomenon. Music has appeared in every single society. It has arisen from every corner of the globe. Music is a fundamental part of human nature, and its universality has puzzled philosophers, mathematicians, and musicians themselves. Let's look at Plato. He believed that music has an influence on the soul, but a strictly dichotomous influence. It is either good or bad. In the ancient Greek size, music's influence was due to the similarity between it and astronomy and mathematics. The same mathematical proportions that gave sense to the world were in music as they appeared in nature. And yeah, you know, that makes sense. If you've ever taken a music theory class, you probably know that every chord, every note, fits together like an equation. But it goes a little bit deeper than that. Now, you and I both know that music is a fundamental part of human life. But I want you to really ask yourself why. Why is music so important? Because I don't know. Plato doesn't know. He may think he knows, but he doesn't know. But I'd like to propose just the start of an answer. Like most everything in life, it's biology. When you listen to music, both sides of our brain are being activated, the front and the back, the inside and the outside. Our emotional center lights up, evoking our related memories and the accompanying emotions. And then we get to the real important thing. The transmission of neurotransmitters, especially dopamine, begins. And this dopamine rush that you get produces the notable feeling of the chills. The physical response occurs, you know, it differs from person to person. You may feel a sensation on the back of your neck or a pressure, or you may not feel anything at all. But dopamine does a little bit more than the chills. It plays a huge role in reward and reinforcement. So this rush we get leaves us associating the music we're listening to with an improved mood. And so we keep returning to music, to the same songs, hoping to get that same dopamine rush. I'd like you to think back to a day when you were in a horrible mood and so you got into the car and started playing your favorite songs. I do this all the time and I even try to stay mad, you know, like a challenge. Really prove my point that I'm having a bad day. But every time, 20 minutes later, I'm always singing or tapping my foot to some song. And the more we learn about how music interacts with the brain, the longer the list of musical therapies and benefits grows. In January 2011, Gabby Giffords, an ex-Arizona congresswoman, was shot in the head. Once a vibrant speaker, she now couldn't begin to formulate sentences. On her way to rebuilding her speech, her rehabilitation doctors used music, which she couldn't say she was able to sing. The neural pathways she used while singing were not the same ones that had been damaged but her neural connections were strengthened every time she sung and it improved her ability to speak. Now let's look back to six-year-old me and what was going on inside my brain. There's a reason my mom was excited for me to start piano lessons. As a brain develops, playing music improves multitasking, social, and cognitive skills. But the real kicker is brain structure changes. The repetition of learning and playing a piece of music strengthens the neural connections between the left and right hemispheres of the brain. 
Gabby Gifford's ability to speak is what was restored by those neural connections. And we've barely scratched the surface of music's potential. Every year, there are a whole slew of discoveries and new musical therapies that help thousands of people. So when your default ringtone abruptly wakes you up Monday morning, instead of shutting it off immediately, try to enjoy the music for a little bit longer. Thank you. Thank you.